Hey, Adam. How you doing, man? Good. So uh, we've got some new questions this week. Shoot. What so, do we got? Last week we did a uh, we did a video about where we use some machetes, right? Yes. And you moved quite a bit differently than Wing Chun, right? Yes. A lot of questions came in. What style was that? Oh yeah, I probably got in trouble for that. Sometimes I forget the name was the Alex. Yeah. Yeah. So uh what was it? Okay. Uh I'll try to remember what the clip is. I'm gonna get Chris to put last time's clip in the corner so you can see the movement. Or you can watch a full episode in the description and I'll get Chris and Trulio to put it in the bottom. Um The entries that I did most of it was Wing Chun. When I threw you that throw when I threw you, I learned it from Jesse. Jesse was the founder of non-classical Kung Fu, but Jesse learned that kind of throw from Steve Smith, who's the inheritor of Fukin Chuan. Fukin was a teacher of Bruce Lee. He did many, many styles of Kung Fu, and that's the type of throw that I did, right? But what I did, in my mind, is just a crude imitation of what Jesse and Steve did. You want to learn a better version of it, or a more authentic version of it, go contact Steve Smith. So that's where the throw comes from, but that kind of throw you'll see in the Aiki art, you also see it in uh, Bagua, you'll see it in Head China. So, all, well, hand maneuver you see in a lot of styles, but the, that very specific way of doing it comes from those styles I just talked about. Mm. About the blade work. Yeah, and the blade work was just my own expression. I just pick up the blade and start working. Because if you can use your hands, you can use a blade. However, there are some Filipino influence in there, I notice, right? And then, uh, as for the low line switching hits and stuff like that, that comes from Xing Yi. Uh, that I learned from Sifu Mike Smith many years ago. And then I forget, I think I did some trapping. Some of the backfist work that I did were from non-classical Kung Fu, right? So it's from different arts, but it's not a mixture of different arts. It's an integration of different arts. And maybe you can, in the description below, we did an episode on that. You can put that, because I don't want to go into that. That was a long discussion of the difference no, between... Just a yeah. quick one. Basically, yeah. integration means yeah. putting a bunch of arts together, like putting them in a blender and whatever comes out is yes. integration yes. versus, you know, mixing, mixing, which you have 10 different arts with moves from 10 different places right. and so on. Right. Good memory, man. So, yeah. So <clears throat> that's, but the main reason why I did a clip, why I did all that was just to illustrate one very simple point, And that is how free hands, that kind of coiling work, that kind of sticking can really help um, well, for me anyways, it helps the Wing Chun, especially in the third form of the BG, the threading idea. That's a nice idea, but I found being able to do it in different angles through the free hands really, really helped me. And I first saw free hands in Northern Shaolin class with Sifu Mike Smith. Later on, I saw it in Bagua when I was studying Bagua. And then later on, when I was playing with blades, it came out more. And much older, I saw Steve Smith do it. And then I started going, ah, they do it like this way, which is really cool. So I started getting into it more, right? And so it's, again, many different arts. But um, I found it really helped the Wing Chun. That's why we do it, right? And I'm going to put it in... Um, in the Buji level three, that's going to be released soon. So I'm going to put it in the level three form. And also remember you sending me a comment that people are asking, how do you do this, right? Even though I gave some tips. When I do a YouTube clip, I'm just giving really short snippet clips, right? But to actually develop this stuff is, you have to be patient with yourself because it's not just about learning tricks. You got to learn the proper way of moving. You got to learn how to generate speed, accuracy, power. You got to learn how to stick. Got to learn how to use it in an offensive manner and got to learn how to use it in a defensive manner. So when you're moving, you're not really thinking, right? So you just take your time and grow this stuff, right? Progressively. Yeah. Progressively. The idea is that when you crash into something, you don't really resist. You blend. But you blend in such a way that to the other guy, it feels like you're resisting. If you're blending in such a way the other guy can feel what you're doing, then not. I wouldn't practice it personally, right? You want to be... When you're being hard, the guy shouldn't really feel it. If you're being soft, the guy shouldn't feel it. You should try to weave your way in, in a way that, that really helps me, right? But it's not so much about the movement or stop. It's when you feel something, you should stop and kind of feel where that pressure is going in your body. And then after that, you start working on the angles. That's the progression. The stillness part is actually more important than the movement part. But people don't want to look at it like that because it's not realistic. But when you're first learning, it's not realistic. You're learning something. So you got to be patient with yourself and go, hey, when a guy's pushing you, just don't move for a second. Observe what's actually happening. And I found that really helped me with many, many things, not just martial art, right? 
instead of being compulsively to do something, to know something, to stop for a second and observe. It. So that's what so, I'm doing. It's kind of a follow-up related question to that. Yeah. Um, do you find that doing blade work improves your handwork or yes. doing handwork improves your blade work? Like is yes. It, both yes. Both yes. Yes. So So you should be doing both of them then. In my opinion, yes. In the old days, it was definitely a 100% yes. I know Chinese martial arts looked at right now as <clears throat> you learn empty handwork, and most people don't do the weapons work. If they do, sometimes they know the form, sometimes they know the two-man set, but they can't really free flow anymore. That part's lost, right? Sometimes you'll find a guy really rarely that can do it off application, but most of the time, they'll just learn a weapons form, they do the two-man sets, they can demonstrate application when it's prearranged. But as for taking it more to live, that people sometimes lost that because of sociological reason, right? right? And because of that, the way they frame it is you learn empty hand, and the weapon is an extension of your hand. So you learn empty hand first, and then you go learn weapons. In African martial arts, uh, some lineages of Indonesian martial arts, and some Haiti martial arts, and a lot of Filipino martial arts, you learn weapons first, and then you learn empty hands. In fact, in some time if people don't stay long enough in the village arts, they'll learn weapons art and never study the MDM part. So that already proof that it is possible to learn the weapons first. Whereas a lot of Chinese martial arts would say, no, that's not possible. You'll screw it up. You have to learn the basics. You gotta learn empty hand first. But yet in the other parts of the world for hundreds of years they have proven, no, you can learn weapons first. And then <clears throat> but if you look at China in older times, soldiers would learn weapons only or sometimes weapons first. It's just somehow through the history when that was lost during peace time, they start changing what they're saying. They go, no, 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 you gotta learn empty hands first. And they drag it on for 10 years before you even get a touch of weapon, right? It's a good way to make money too, but I find it a little bit misleading because if you look at pre-Ming Dynasty, Chinese martial art, first day you get to pick up a sword. So what are you talking about? And that still exists in other martial arts, like I said today, Japanese, Filipino, African. So I believe that if you want to learn weapons and empty hand, you can do it at the same time, if you have the time. It's a lot of time to um, learn these things, right? Because there's a lot of weapons. There's saber, there's spear, there's axe, hammer, there's swords. And each weapon has a different property to it. If they're the same, they will be the same weapon. So we, they're all different. Empty hands different, weapons different. They're definitely different. You train, you train, you train, you train, you train until they're all the same to you. But if you don't train until it's the same to you and you just quote it, oh, it's all the same, it's called lying. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. And that, that's an interesting uh, thing because I always thought of weapons as being the next level of training, right? Because you're yeah. thinking like, it makes sense. Well, why would you pick up a weapon if you can't even use your hands first? But it makes yeah. sense the other way around. If you could pick up a weapon and learn how to use it really well, when you drop the weapon, yeah. does the do the attributes that you build yes. transfer? Oh, definitely. So they definitely transfer. One hundred percent. But you can't use wet, some weapon techniques with empty hands. No, they are different. Vice versa, right? They're different, right? So you learn um, some things. If you got two different objects, some things, including the human hand or whatever, some things transfer, some things don't. Right? You have to train enough to distinguish what those things are. And it's not as simple as people think. Because a lot of things that people think it doesn't transfer, transfer directly. And a lot of things that don't transfer, that you think will transfer, it doesn't. So you have to train until you figure it out for yourself. Can you give an transfer. example of that? Well, today, like, I mean, not today, last time we did a clip on the blade work and I did a free hands, transfer. Right? But some things don't transfer. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like when, uh, when you say, um, yeah. like some things don't transfer, like you think... Uh, well, like footwork, for example, the way you move with a blade, right. you have to move your feet in certain ways that when you follow through, you don't cut your leg off, right? Oh, okay. Usually that doesn't exist. Yeah. That doesn't exist with empty hand. Because you can go like this to your leg, it doesn't come off. So, so some things don't transfer. It doesn't really need to be done, right? So, and the, the material of the weapon changes everything. Plastic, wood, metal, it changes the spirit of it, changes everything. It's one thing playing with plastic knives, another thing when a guy pulls out a real knife. Automatically, your psyche knows it's genetic memory, you know, okay, that will kill me. 
pointiness, sharpness. Yeah, man. Blunt force. Yeah. yeah, it's like throwing a Nerf ball at someone versus a real rock. Your brain knows. So <clears throat> people shouldn't disrespect weapon arts. Most people do. They say, oh, I don't have to learn that. I say, oh, okay. But what happens when someone want to kill you? You get on the phone and call someone with a gun for a reason. He has a weapon. Would you call someone with a vote again? Most people won't. <laughs> yeah. Someone breaking into your house in the middle of the night, first thing most people do, if they're not overly civilized, is to look for a weapon. When they know their wife and kids are in danger, they look for a weapon. They, they don't look for a technique. They, go, they try to grab anything they can grab, right? And every martial arts has weapons. No. They Some don't. martial arts were invented after wartime, right? So it becomes dueling arts. MMA doesn't have weapons. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of modern martial art that was invented in peacetime doesn't have weapons. It's based on dueling. It's based on social balance. The worst thing that can happen is you get knocked out or something. And if something serious happens, like you die, you go in a coma or whatever, it's an accident. It wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. Weapon arts, social, that's social balance. Predatorial balance are different. If you die, that's by design. If you don't die, that's an accident. That's war arts, right? So I'm glad that war arts are extinct almost. That means we're living peaceful time. If war arts are not extinct, if they come back, that means we're... Not a good time. Life, right? And nowadays, it would be guns anyways. I mean, like if, if a war happened, what would you use? I mean, that's maybe a support skill set, but it won't be a primary skill set. So, but I like weapons right? because it teaches people to drop the douche, right? Because as soon as a weapon's involved, you're not... All of a sudden, this goes away because you go, hey, maybe I should be a better person. Do I really want to cut off your head and watch it roll down? Oh, yeah, I don't care. No, really? You can do that in front of your wife because she can do that to you. Really? You want to do this? So you start thinking maybe peace is the way to go. So extreme violence, usually, unless the guy's born social law, like sociopath, extreme violence usually inspires peace. So these two are connected. The thing in the middle is not connected. Douche grows this way. I'm going to get douchier, douchier, douchier. But if you train something that's really violent, not playing around in the middle, you end up peaceful. But if you are training in the middle, I don't think martial arts is good for society. It's a menace to society. The middle stuff. Who oh, got you. You know, it's like, okay. So this is important because it's not just about, but it's about, you walk out of the dojo, how's your life, man? I remember Jesse said something to me that really sticks. He said, hey, you watch a guy go on the floor, you watch him move, you watch him walk, you know how his life is. Not always, but nine times out of ten. Same nervous system. The guy that's in the class is the same guy walking out of class. He talks shit a lot but can't do stuff, same guy at work. Right? Same guy at home, right? Can't control his temper, want to show up, same guy in relationship, same guy when he's driving. It's always the same guy. Oh, he's respectful, he's patient, but he's kind of weak and scared. Same guy at work, same guy getting bullied. Right? But this guy's strong, but he has honor and he's peaceful. He's probably got a pretty good life. Right? This guy's strategic, but he's honorable. Watch his finance, he'll grow. Right? This guy's always like, I wish I could do that, I know I can do this, but he never does it. Look at his bank records, it's probably. So everything's connected, not always, but like Jesse said, probably 80% of the time is true. You don't get a new nervous system magically just because it doesn't fall over the sky just because you walk out of class, right? You have the same brain. So when you watch people, it's like, hey man, it's not good to grow the douche. It's good to grow the extreme stuff so you inspire peace. And then maybe when you get out of class and the guy comes in, you know, like they go, hey, the best compliment you can get is when someone go, since I've been practicing, my life's gotten better, man. You know, but that's like, right? But if someone goes, hey, since I turned with you, man, I feel like I'm more of a douche. Thanks, man. I'm more badass. <laughs> then, then how do you feel about that, right? So, like, and you get both. You're not above that. You always get that. So you just sit back and go, maybe it's time for me to quit teaching. Maybe it's time for me to keep going. Like, you don't know, right? And you're always adjusting, right? But it, I'm just making a blanket statement. Obviously, there's a crossover, like a spider web, right? Right. Everyone's got their reasons, right? Yeah, for sure. Right? So you just, all you can do is try your best, right? But the weapons are, it really opens up stuff. The angles, my God. Your strategy, right? Your ability to use vocals, right? Your ability the, to use the, proper the fear speed. fear and the overriding the fear, yeah. That, the fear, because it's a real blade, right? To know the point in space and judgment and distance, 
And you, and you mentioned footwork, right? You were saying Crazy. that some yeah. of the footwork, footwork doesn't transfer, but yeah, some of them does. Right? In my limited experience, it transfers a lot. It makes you way faster on your feet way, when you, you have you to. You gotta be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah for okay. sure. So it changes everything, and, and the angles off your hand, just the torquing and stuff like that. The yeah. way you like use power, so you're not flipping so much bone, and so yeah, the pointiness of the weapon. When you start using your hand, you stop looking at it like some blunt object, man, right? So there's a lot of... I love weapons. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else, man? Nope, that's it. We'll All right, guys. Here. See you next week.